what is happening in this video we're going to be doing the filler stone chip and paint on the rx8 cells so i'm just going to start by putting the wheels on, lowering the car down and moving it back because the legs of the lift are in the way and then I'm just going to start filling and sanding so I'll just fire you guys straight on the time lapse and get started. So I'm going to start by just going around the edges with 80 grit and then grinding some more of these welds down and then just start filling up from the bottom and in here. So yeah, I'll fire you guys on a time lapse and uh, and get cracking. Also, I feel like I didn't actually address this in the last video, but the shroud of my welder is completely screwed, and there is a part missing from inside the welder. <laughs> It's on here to actually hold the wire, so the wire speed's really, really inconsistent. That's why, well, that is one of the many excuses I'm going to give you guys for my welds looking like absolute dog shit. And that's just so you guys know. I'm not that bad at welding, but that's, yeah, questionable. But it is 0.8 mil steel, and Mazdas are made of nothing. And I'm welding to bad steel, so yeah. That's all my excuses for you guys as to why the welds are rough. But I also have a grinder, so it's fine. It's fine. You don't need to be a good welder if you've got a grinder. That's just fact. Okay, that is as good as this car is getting out of me. So it's all smoothed in perfect. It's a little rougher underneath, but again, that's underneath and in here. That's a little bit rough back here, but more than presentable for the car that it is. So what I'm gonna do now is mask it all off ready for the stone chip and then scuff up to the masking tape with some red scotch. Okay, this is what we'll be using. It's U-Pole Gravitex. It's black. You can get it in gray and I'm pretty sure white, but it's really, really good stone chip and it dries really fast. So I'll stick you guys on a time lapse, stick a couple of coats of this on and then show you the result. Okay, and this is the final product. So as you can see, it adds texture to it, but there is actually already a stone chip line up to here. It's just not as harsh as what we've just done. But as you can see, it's all coming out real, real nice. I mean, you could just leave it like that. It doesn't look the worst. But what we are gonna do is let this dry, key it down, hit it with some white wet on wet primer, and then fire some red over it. But yeah. Definitely a decent enough repair, again, for the value of the car. Now just the other side to do. So 
So you've seen it before, it'll be the same thing again. So by the power of YouTube, I wasn't gonna leave you guys out of the fun bit, so I'm gonna start stone chipping this and unmasking it, and I'll leave you guys on the video. It's like a new cell. Get that out of there. Yeah, so all in, it's looking pretty good. And rather than try and force dry it and then paint it tonight, I'm just gonna leave it tonight, come back in tomorrow, wet and wet primer, base clear, finished. So I'm going home to get food. So we are back and it is warm today, so I'm gonna get this done as quick as possible so I can go home. Plan is, key down the stone chip with some 400 or some red scotch or something, white wet on wet primer, and then base and clear. Just time lapse it, get it done. The reason for the white wet on wet primer is just so the red covers it far faster because trying to put base straight over that stone chip that's not happening <laughs> not red anyway so i'm gonna hunt down the paint coat on this thing then mix the paint up get it masked up get it keyed up and start painting it's so warm this is like the hottest day of the year so far and i am feeling it also this is a prime time for you guys to scroll down like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you are not subscribed uh, if you stick about to the end of the video, we're going to be talking about the plans for the 36, so stay tuned. And in true fashion, I start masking, then realize the paint coat, I'm pretty sure, is in that door. Class. Okay, so on this one, someone's either pulled the sticker off or it wasn't in it. So if you, like most Mazdas, pop the cap off the window, then although it's written in there in uh, pen, that is actually from factory because they paint these and then obviously stick them on a shelf. So the code for this is 27A. Just so you guys know, worst case scenario, you can call Mazda and they will with the chassis number give you the paint code but hopefully when we put it into the computer that is actually a paint code and brings up that v velocity red or whatever color that is Okay, that's it all bagged up, both sides. So, I was gonna wet on wet this with some white primer, but I uh, don't have any hardener for it and I can't get any today, so I'm painting it. So I'm just gonna lash the base coat straight over the stone guard and uh, yeah, hope that it covers well enough. At the end of the day, it's never gonna be a perfect repair. It's a stone chip line half out the quarter, but I am sick of this car now and I want it gone so it is getting painted today. Paint is mixed up and in the gun. So let's get started. I imagine this is going to take a lot of coats before it's red, but sure.
Okay, so we're like five coats of base on there, I think, which isn't actually as much as I thought it would be. And uh, it just seems to be a really bad match on the scheme because that's a way redder red compared to the car. And well, from what I can tell, anyway, it's just a bad match because I've checked it against the color card and the color card looks grand against the car, but the actual mixed paint looks nothing like the color card. I've made sure I haven't used any of the wrong tinters or anything, but there is a couple of colors on the MEPA solvent scheme that are like that. So I'm just assuming that's the problem. Like there's just another color that's just nothing like the color card. The new color cards they released are way better, um, but there's still one or two of the old ones that haven't been changed. And that just goes to show that's one of them. It was never gonna be perfect anyway. I don't mind. Red is better than black. So I'm gonna let this coat flash off and then dust another coat over the top of it and then just fire some clear on. And this is the result. It's actually nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I think when, uh, when I was putting the base coat on, it just looked a whole lot redder, but yeah. It's still wet. I pulled it off whilst it was wet, so it didn't pull the clear off with it. So it didn't pull the clear off with the masking tape. But it's definitely a whole lot better than, uh, than it was. Anyway, you couldn't complain. I'm gonna let it dry off for another five, 10 minutes. Um, that's five minute clear anyway, so it shouldn't be long before I can take it outside in this heat. So I'll show you guys the finished product outside and then we will start talking about the E36. So as you can see, it actually does not look bad at all. I'm still gonna take a bit of masking off underneath where I've masked up some of the clips, but all things considered, it's a whole lot better than what it was. I even kept like the original stone chip line in it to try and just distract from the fact that it's there. Yeah, again, it's not perfect, but to me, it's as good as that car ever needed or deserved. So, on to the E36. So, the E36. I really want to get drifting that car. It's a 318 IS and there's a whole lot missing. So my plan is I have quite a lot of the bits to leave it stock body, but the stock body to leave it perfect, I'll need new wings and I'll need patch panels for the quarters. And it just doesn't make sense for me to go and buy that when I eventually do want overs. And although over fenders are cheap, they are delays in shipping and a cost that I can't afford at the minute. So my plan is to leave it stock body, weld patches into the arches, fiberglass bits and pieces, try and leave it looking good for the meantime. It's not going to be a permanent repair because further down the road we will be cutting the arches, cutting the wings and putting over fenders on it. That seems to be the cheapest way for me to do it straight away leave it stock body, make it look good temporarily, and then further down the road, we'll get over fenders and we will get the high rise spoiler and all the cool stuff that I do want to do to it. And we'll throw that on further down the line. So engine wise, if you guys follow or subscribe to Mike Lake, him and one of his buddies have just boosted a 316 in the cheapest fashion possible so what i'm gonna do hopefully if all works out well with nothing but cheap parts boost the 318 is and aim for sort of six cylinder brake horsepower maybe more ideally in and around 200 220 horsepower 
The reason I want to do this is to test it. If it works for a long enough period of time, then blows up, it's almost worth keeping it a 318 IS, you're saving a little bit of weight, and I can always get a 318 IS engine. 328 engines, I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but over here they are skyrocketing in price. They are in and around 1200 pounds just for the engine and gearbox if you were to look to convert one of these cars to a 328. That's not happening. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the boosted 318 IS, sort of 8 to 10 PSI, gets us in and around the six cylinder right horsepower without paying the six cylinder price figure. Now, I'm not certain that's what we're gonna do, but I'm pretty confident that we're gonna give it a go. I am still pricing up parts and finding out who can ship to us right now. I'm based in Northern Ireland, so it's really, really hard for us to get stuff at the minute with COVID and Brexit and all this and paying import tax now. And so it's extremely confusing to work out what we can and can't actually get. But I am working on it. The E36 algorithmically is a great thing for the growth of the channel. I've noticed it in the views, even on the first video, that they are way, way better than any of the other videos we've done to date. So I do want to get started on it and I do want to make a great car for the track and street out of it. But I am this close to being 100% decided on everything. I am just sourcing parts. So although the E36 is bringing the most traffic to the channel, it is still a little weight away from me actually starting the project. As I say, I don't want to start it and then stop because we've not got parts, then start it and then stop again. I would like to have at least 80% of the parts all together and then we can just get stuck in and get the E36 to the track. So the reason the E36 is becoming a track car and street car is because I can drive it to the track, take it on the track and drive it home. And a lot of people are probably thinking, well, especially from Northern Ireland, are thinking, why ruin an E36 as a track car? This car in my brain is standing me zero money at the minute. And even though finished, it would be worth something. I really, really want to hone in skills and actually get good drifting. I've never ever driven on a track in my life other than go-kart tracks. So I've done quite a lot of drifting, but on like private land and Mexico and things. So I just want to be able to have a car that I can jump in, take to the track and get some serious seat time in. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be it. Again, other parts of the world, you maybe pick these cars up really, really easily and cheaply, but over here, they are getting rarer and rarer, and drift tax is a real, real thing in Northern Ireland, where anything that can be used as a drift car in any way, shape, or form has just shot up in value anyway. I considered a 350Z or something like that, but when I already have this, I would have to finish this properly, weld in quarters, do all that, then sell it to buy a 350Z. And that just eats so much time and I would really, really like at least this year to get some seat time in the car, sort of work out where I stand with it and then make my adjustments for the next drift season. Again, I don't know anything about actual competitive drifting or even drift days, I've never been to one. So this is all a learning curve for me. It sat about that long that the money that I did pay for it and put into it to date really is forgotten about because it was so long ago. So it's like a zero cost drift car to start off with. And it's a great project for the channel. I've never set up an E36 drift car. I've set them as street drift cars, but I've never set one up for the track. So all the advice that you guys can offer is very much appreciated. So yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed because the E36 will be making an appearance in the not too distant future. So for you guys that don't follow me on TikTok, you didn't get the update, but the pit bike is probably gonna be part of a giveaway. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, I don't really know how you do a giveaway on YouTube. I've never done one before, but we will work it out and we will give it to someone. Probably do a build on it. We'll maybe do a build on it. We'll maybe buy some new 
new plastics and like the exhaust needs fixed and yeah we might even do a couple of videos on it so we'll maybe do some videos on it then give it away and then someone's getting a sick pit bike for for a competition i don't know we'll work it out also we're almost at 100 subscribers i know that doesn't sound like much to anybody but i am super stoked by 100 subscribers it's so so difficult to like grow a youtube channel and yeah i just appreciate you guys i appreciate you so I hope you guys have enjoyed the RX-8 videos, although they were a little bit different than normal. The E36 is going to have very similar repairs on the passenger side still, and there's going to be probably a whole video about that. So, subscribe if you haven't already, like if you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.